Uh, Russia to this day blames Estonia for the collapse of the Soviet Union, which makes it difficult for Estonians. You know, they're, they're given a hard time sometimes moving around, uh, you know, Russia. And, and they were even persecuted. Uh, they, they were always persecuted. They, they called them such ugly and mean names like Westerner and capitalist. And I mean, can you imagine, like, this is the worst possible expletives, you know, to, to, the, to the Soviet psyche, you know. And, and, and uh, I, remember, I remember preaching there, too, and an old lady came up, and she was just shaking her fist at me, just, just full of hate. And she just, just capitalist, capitalist, you know, just, just angry, because I was preaching there in the streets, you know. And, and um, so I just walked over, and, you know, and I, was, I was just sharing the love of Jesus to her, and, and she sat there for a while, and, but, but she just finally just anger boiled over, and she walked off. But, you know, it's amazing that over the years, you know, you, um, things, things uh, the, the Word of God has a way of breaking through. And then on the other hand, some people hear and receive the word and, and, and the cares of this life, the desires for other things and the deceitfulness of wealth take over and choke what God had intended to do. Or, you know, like the parable of the sower, you know, those, those, the, it's only, only one out of four cases that actually produced fruit for God. The first, it landed on hard ground, the devil stole it, Jesus interprets the parable. In the second case, uh, it was received with joy. But then, um, as it was received with joy, they didn't uh, go to any effort to, to have roots go down deep in God and in his word. And then at an opportune moment, the devil came and, and put pressure on the person. And they backed off. You know? And, um, and it happens today, too. You know, um, I was... Uh, God's opened up doors. We've, we've moved around a little bit more. Uh, some of you know, and, and this church helped. And in fact, Pastor Ed, you, you know that you were the, you were the, your, your amount of money was the, was, the, was the thing that clinched the miracle with the building. I don't know if you, you, remember, you remember that. We bought a Soviet building, 23,000 square feet, Department of Forestry building. Um, and it had the customs and the, and the toll um, for our part of the country. A tag agency, and it was, it, was a, it was the biggest government building in, in, our, in our whole province. And uh, so we bought this thing, and um, it was amazing because um, it was supposed to be bought by a Finnish business. <laughs> and this Finnish business, uh, they basically negotiated with the local man, and, um, and, and I got together with this local man. I said, are you sure you want to you wanna just... Uh, give it to an outsider. Don't you want to keep it within the family? I'm, I'm, I'm meaning within Estonians. And he says, tell you what, if you come up with the money in three weeks, it's yours. I said, it's done. And I'm thinking this is almost a million crowns at the time, which is still low compared to, you know, what it would cost in the United States for such a huge building. It's all, I mean, we're talking walls that were this thick with concrete. We're talking floor. You know, there's a, there's a nuclear fallout shelter in the basement. Trust God, we never need to use it. <laughs> But it's like, it's like over a yard thick of steel reinforced concrete, the main floor, floor, you know, so the, this basement is a labyrinth of 42 rooms underground in this nuclear fallout shelter with these great big, like, bank vault doors, some of them just curved, you know, convex doors with this big wheel and stuff like that. It's, it's like it takes almost two men to just push the thing open and shut. I mean, it's, or just, or just pastor. It's pastor strong. Yeah. And, um. But, it, but, it's, but it's amazing because um, uh, I shook hands and I said, we're, we're going to do it. That was a gift of faith because, I mean, I, I've tried raise, raising support quickly for different things in the past and it just, it just didn't go. But I felt, I felt, take it, seize it, it's yours. This is, the, you know. And, and the amazing thing was that um, when, when it was the day of the signing, we were going go to go to the lawyers to sign. And... Um, <clears throat> Our treasurer phones and says, you know what, the American dollar rate had dropped over those three weeks and, and we're, we're $3,000 short. And, um, and I'm thinking, you know, we, we got 20, or actually we had 40 minutes till the signing. And I'm thinking there's no way we can, at this time of day, you know, bright and early, first thing in the morning, we're, we're, it sounds like, uh, I mean, these days, you could even do it on a cash advance, somebody could do it. But th at that time, you know, even, even just that number of years ago, there was no way we could get money that fast. And so anyway, I said, well, <laughs> we're going to go to a bank in faith. And, um, 
we even phoned the bank, and the bank said, you know, we, you know, they see the wires, you know, the ones that are basically scheduled to come in posting, and uh, they, they said that, well, we don't see anything posting. It looks like there's, there's no possibility of anything until later today at the earliest. And so we just went to the bank by faith. And somehow when we got there, your pastors and your churches, I mean, your guys' $3,000 was sitting there in, in the account. I mean, it, it basically had just arrived, and, and nobody saw it when I phoned 20 minutes earlier. And that's not possible. And suddenly it was there. And we went over there and boldly signed it and bought the building, and, and we have it right now. So it's in the, it's in the, uh, we had to change the roof on it, you know, and, and uh, we, we found out that the Soviet blueprints, uh, what was said, what was stated in the Soviet blueprints, when we pulled the roof off to put the new roof off, they did not match at all. <laughs> and so we had to totally rebuild the structure and everything to get the new roof on, and so we're still in the process because Estonia now is a part of the European Union. And that's sort of like bureaucracy central. Yeah. You know, you think there's bureaucracy in the United States. Uh, maybe on the highest levels in the United States, it, it, they, these guys love bureaucracy. It's their hobby. And, and they, they create hoops that you have to jump through just, just because they like to see you jump. <laughs> it's just the way it is over there, you know. And I remember, it, it's even, there's something demonic about that kind of a thing, I think. Yeah. I remember even getting visas in, a, in, in Eastern Europe back, back in the day, you know. It, when, it, when this was still, because like Pastor was mentioning, we, we went there uh, 13 and a half months before the wall came down. It was still communist Soviet Union. You know, we had, with, uh, you know, border, border guards with all the, you know, with all the people with, you know, all those guards with submachine guns and, you know, all these automatic weapons and stuff. And, and, um, and uh, a bit of a strange, strange border. But I remember one time applying for a visa, uh, and I think we were in, in Hungary or somewhere, and... Um, and they just, they just took, uh, they, they took our, our passports and set them on the table, uh, you know, and you could see them through the glass as you're sitting there in the waiting room, and they continued just drinking and playing cards. So they're playing poker or something back there. Our, our visas are stacked up there, and every once in a while they'd laugh and just point their finger at us, you know, you know and, and, and just laugh, you know, because it's almost like they like to make you nervous or sweat. I mean, it's like a very strange world. Um, now we're dealing with, with different problems. Uh, the countries have become so westernized, and along with the westernization, materialism has come in so much that it's a full-time job keeping people's minds accurate on the things of, on the things of God's kingdom. Are you here? Yeah. Anybody ever had to fight to keep focus, you know, to, to seek God? Anybody breathe here this morning? <laughs> I mean, because if you're walking, you've walked with God for any length of time, you know, you, know, you know the struggle. And, and, and the Lord said that in the time of the end, the darkness would be greater. And we're living in those days. It's not an easy time. But hunger is totally possible. We, we've been starting to move around in Europe a little bit more in recent times. And, and um, uh, we were in Italy, and I was totally amazed. They didn't want me to stop. They invited us down for a prayer and intercession seminar. And... Um, this church had put out a lot of the worship CDs in, uh, in, in Italy, or really all of them. They, they produced them. And, um, and so uh, I'm saying, you know, so, so when, when, when do you want us to stop for the, for the first break? Oh, uh, not for a while yet. It was three hours wow. until they wanted the first break. And then when the break came, the Italians, they know how to eat. And they know how to put a spread out, the, you know, and then they lost themselves. And then when they realized how much time had elapsed during lunch, they go, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, we, you know, mamma mia, we, we, no, next break is only five minutes. And then it went on another several hours. What was supposed to be maybe four hours a day ended up being six hours, seven hours a day, actually. And, um, and I remember one night um, coming back another time because we, we returned. Um, <laughs> Coming three hours out of town with the pastors to, to you know, returning home to, to minister and just to spend an evening with his leaders. And, uh, you know, I guess the food was out and everything. And, and 10 o'clock, and they said, well, we need to hear from Pastor Ken. How many want to hear from Pastor Ken still? And, oh, yeah, you know, so all the hands went up. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, we just returned from a, a long weekend of, of intense discussion and ministering to, to this other uh, uh, leader in another city. And... Um, and so I thought, well, okay, here we go. 
You gotta, how many know you've got to be ready in season and out of season? This is why the water level has to be high. We cannot survive with a low water level. And especially in the years to come, the higher the water level spiritually, the better. You'll have inspiration that rises, strength that rises. It's not enough to just know the formulas because all that God has asked us to do work better when we're filled more with him. Are you here? And, um, and so uh, I said, all right, well, we will start. And, and so I figured I'd wrap up somewhere around... You know, since this is already 10 o'clock, quarter after 11, I figured I'd, ra- I'd, I'd be wrapping up. They said, no, 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 no. No stopping yet. You keep us speaking, uh, and we bring an espresso, and we keep the espressos coming. And I'm thinking, my goodness, they, they wanted me to go till after midnight here again. And these people have to rise, you know, 6 o'clock to go to work. And I'm thinking, you know, hunger does exist. The hunger has to be stirred. And, and uh, I believe we have a real challenge in, in the United States of America to keep hunger stirred because of the, of the different pressures. I believe that there are different demonic pressures that have been loosed on the United States because it's a powder keg and the devil knows it. Yeah. With the amount of teaching here, the only way that to, keep, uh, to keep things uh, pushed down is, is to keep a strong hand over top you know, of, of, things, of things spiritually. And, and you know what? Uh, a lot of things going on outwardly, politically, is, a, is an expression of, of, a, of, a, of a dry time that has come into the United States. This is one reason I'm, I was happy. When I, the moment I walked in the hall, I tell you the honest truth, this, this is one of the healthiest atmospheres I have experienced in three months of traveling around the United States. We're all over the map for the first month and a half, many, many different places. I remember doing a, 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 a meeting Strong church, considered a very strong church. Actually, it is a, it is a strong church, but, but the spiritual level is, is not what it was years earlier. So I did three morning meetings there, had, had good meetings. They're, 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 they're good, strong meetings. But it, it, it's, it's sad when, when, when there was something that you're not feeling and you're not experiencing. Because the temple of God has to have the presence of God in it. It must have the presence of God in it. The temple without the presence of God is Ichabod. Yes. And so this is, this is why, this is why there, is a, there is a fight in the spirit to remove the presence of God out of churches. Yeah. Devil doesn't care how big those churches get. They could, they could end up being like the Astrodome. They could end up being filled with people. But filled with people, even if they're... See, Tower of Babel was a unity too. Yeah. Uh-huh. But it didn't please God. Because it wasn't a unity of the spirit. It was a unity of man's plans. Were they unified? Yeah, they're unified. God said nothing's impossible to them because of the unity there. But God was, was angered and displeased at what he saw. And there, there, there are plans afoot from the enemy. He's infiltrated a lot of the mainstream Christianity to, 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 to bring about... Uh, an attitude where we just gather all the people. There, it's, it should be illegal, and in God's mind, it angers God when, when people are gathered, but they're not formed. Amen. And the plans and purposes of God are not thought about. The people are gathered just so that, in some cases for image, some cases it, it just, it, it, there's a deception. You know, God is building a temple in this day, and just to have a bunch of stones that are not assembled meaningfully is not an assembled temple. Are you here? Yeah. It's interesting because I, I came in and the presence of God, the presence of God is here. And, um, you know, we're, we're talking about worship just a, just a few minutes ago, just before I came up there too. Um, The first time the word worship is used in the Bible, it was when Abraham went up on the mount with Isaac to sacrifice. He didn't go up on the mount with a tambourine or a synthesizer. There wasn't music involved. It was a place of great sacrifice. And sometimes we uh, we lose sight of the fact that, that worship is above all, it's a heart position before God. Music is a tool. It can be a strong tool, but music is not one, it's not equal with, it's not, it, it isn't worship. And people get that confused this day and age because in, in, in modern day 
churches. Sometimes the spirit of worship is so overshadowed by the technology and the perfection of the singers and the, and the musicians and everything like this. I thank God. I thank God for, for, for you know, um, I thank God for, for, for good skill. You notice that you can have skill on the platform yeah. and the Spirit of God can still be there. Yeah. That's why I remember, I remember when, when my brother, one of the very first uh, solos you did was, was, uh, was when I was in the, visiting here one time. I don't know how many years ago. You know, it's, it's, um, it was a long time ago. And I thought to myself, what a beautiful timbre, what a beautiful voice. This, this can go somewhere, and it, and it has gone somewhere, and it's even more beautiful today. And, and I feel just stirred. Long for the presence of God more and more and more. Because, see, the thing is, what we carry and what we are filled with is what comes out when we minister to people. It's around the coffee table. It's with our relatives. It's off the platform. It's in the music. David, when he sang, you know, people were set free just when he played an instrument. And, and, and it's, a, it's a challenge to me constantly. And so I'm, I'm really blessed. I'm really, really blessed uh, just, just seeing this. And um, I want to I wanna just encourage you. When you come together, when, when, when the saints come together Sunday morning, it's, it's when our priestly duty goes into high gear. Coming together. All of us together is not a light matter appearing before the Lord to minister to the Most High. And when our heart is truly to minister to the Most High with a clean life. See, see what, what, see, there's, there's a problem in today's church a lot of times. Never before have we sang so many beautiful songs with unbeautiful hearts. And it's an affront to God if we're singing beautiful words but our lives are screaming another message. So it becomes hypocrisy. You're saying, honey, I love you, but she knows you're in an affair. Are you here? And that becomes really serious. Those, the words become even, they become painful at that point. They're not even neutral. And so I remember one man of God saying that this way. He said that uh, never have there been so many beautiful buildings filled with miserable people. Because the people are gathering, but they're not gathering for the reason they need to be gathering. It's not about God so many, so many times. And God wants to bring us into a new place, a new hour. See, a lot of, a lot of people have wondered. They've heard the prophes, prophecies of yesteryear about God coming, and there's going to be a powerful move of God, a powerful... How many, how many believe a, a, a powerful move of God still is coming? Yeah. Many people have wondered, is it still coming? Many leaders are, are confused as to what's happening. They may be partially confused about the political scenario, but they may be more confused about just what's happening in the body of Christ because there's so many people that are going in a different direction, being influenced by different things, and they're not about the Lord's plan and purposes with a whole heart. And, um, and, it's, and it's interesting because... Because in, in, in dealing with, let's, let's look at, let's go to the scriptures here right now. Father, I, come, I, th I thank you. We come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the power of your spirit here. I thank you, Father, for the ability of your spirit ministering to each one. I thank you for life flowing from heaven to each one that is in here today with a heart to receive from you. I thank you, Father, for life flowing into their physical bodies. That even as we sit here, I thank you, Father, that, that you're doing a work and Father, I thank you that you're performing operations on the inside of people's internal organs as well as their spirits. I thank you, Father, for moving upon physical bodies. I thank you, Father, for adjusting and correcting spines and bones and joints. And I thank you, Father God, for the power of your spirit moving upon internal organs and bringing, bringing a balance to blood systems. And where blood sugar levels have been out of whack. Father, I thank you. May, in the name of Jesus, let them come into a place of equilibrium and balance 
In the name of Jesus, let healing adjust things. Father, may wisdom come. So that with certain ones, if there's things outwardly that have lent, lent uh, uh, or given way to this, Father, that they would be able to adjust things. But Father, I thank you for bringing normalcy. I thank you, Father, for bringing healing into many even, even ahead of that. Father, we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Let it be. We praise you, Father, for that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I remember we're in, we're in Italy, too, and, and I just announced to people, I said, you know, during this meeting, many of you are going to be healed just sitting here, you know. And, and I remember one, one hand just raised up. He says, you know, it already started happening just, just seconds before you said that it's going to happen. God's here. We've, we've, we've come before his presence right now. Let's just lift up our hands and just tell the Lord, I, I, want, I, want, I want, Lord, I want you to fill me afresh. I want you to touch me afresh. Right now we come before you. Fill us afresh, O oh Lord. Fill us with a new, in a new measure by your spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, my Father. Fill us with your spirit afresh. And Lord, we receive into our bodies right now an endowment. Because Lord, when you were walking in our midst physically, when you were walking on earth physically, you touched people's lives. And all that came to you in faith, you touched them and healed them. So Lord, we're here right now and we reach out to you right now too. And we say, Lord, we receive, we take. We receive from heaven right now. Because Lord, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we're, two are gathered in his name. Three gathered in his name. There you are in the midst of us. So we give you praise for that right now, Lord. We receive your touch. We know you mean business, Lord. Lord, we also mean business. Lord, touch us. Change us. We praise you for that now in Jesus' holy name. Oh, hallelujah. Let it be so. All God's people said. Hallelujah. I was um, some time ago. Hallelujah. I don't know if I expressed this real well, you know, when, when, when Nathan was still in here. Um, it was, it, it, it's, um, when I was talking about the presence of God, it's something we should strive after. Amen. And, and, and I really appreciate what God has done in, in his life. I appreciate what God has done in, in so many people right now. I appreciate your pastors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I got, I've, got to, I've got to say this. Because we're living in a generation where a lot of people that are in, in leadership, that are well famous, they're, 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 they're living so loose. They've, they've gone to, to a place where they figure that, well, God's with me. And because of that, they've become like a law unto themselves. They've entered into a, a lawlessness. And sometimes, and in recent times, they've, they've even attracted doctrines that basically confirm the fact that they don't have to to stick with God's word. They're just free to be before the Lord. There is no walking with God unless they be, you know, how can two walk together except they be agreed, the Bible says. You know, and the Lord says, those that approach me, uh, they, must, they must walk holy. Be holy as I am holy. You know, it's a, it's a big deal. And I tell you this, that any man of God, I don't care how famous he is, that does not preach that we have to be given to God and live holy before him as a false teacher or a false prophet, I'll tell you right now. Your pastor is a man of the word. He wouldn't be the flavor of the month for a lot of people today because they love being loose and not being accountable to anything, the word of God or anybody in the, in the, in the sanctuary for that matter. But if the yoke... If the yoke of Christ, which he talks about in, in, in Matthew 11, if it's, if it's on us that loose, it's not the yoke of Christ anymore. How many knows he, he's really taking us to a place, he's leading us to a place where he can fulfill a purpose. Are you here? Yeah. So some of, these, some of these guys, they're on their fourth marriage. And they don't think anything of it. In one case, you might have heard a story like this yourself. But in one case, he announced, you know, he's marrying, the, he's marrying a, 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 you know, he's, he's leaving his wife, taking up with a secretary in the church. And, 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 and in one case, some of the people in the church just stood up and clapped. Now, how sick is that? It's bizarre. 
is lawlessness. And see, it says, Jesus himself says, and in the time of the end, many, the love of many shall wax cold. Why? Because of lawlessness, because of iniquity. It's the same word in almost. Iniquity and lawlessness is the same word. And it's a frightening thing. Because I remember one man, one man, he, he was, he was, he was, he flowed in worship like very few people I've, I've ever, ever met. And, and I remember we were dealing with this person, you know, in a disciplinary kind of a situation, you know, because he, he got, he got, he got to where he was uh, walking in a place just, uh, he was oppressing his wife pretty seriously. And, and uh, he comes up and he says, you know, if, if God, if God was so against me, then, then why is he still using me like this? And there's people that are doing this, there's people that are saying the same thing too. They're, 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 they're being involved, they're, they're being used for, for healings. See, <clears throat> healings can be counterfeited. Miracles can be counterfeited. Or they can, they can exist even from God, but the person's life be wrong. But the presence of God in a holy life, the devil can never counterfeit. So some of these guys, there's a group of them in one of the cities in the United States. They're off to Las Vegas Monday morning. God knows what they do in Las Vegas. They'll preach and then they go. It's amazing. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said, and many shall come to me on that day. Many shall come to me on that day. Let's all say many. It's not just one, it's not just two, it's many. She'll come to me on that day and said, Lord, have we not done, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out devils in your name? Have we not done mighty works in your name? And Jesus says, depart from me. And what does he say? You workers of lawlessness or iniquity. Same word, anomos again. And, and, and that's a frightening thought because <clears throat> who are the ones doing that kind of thing? It's not generally even the pew sitters. God doesn't look at pew sitters. There's no such thing as a as a as a um, uh, uh, a church member that that is jobless. <laughs> Are you here? We're not meant to warm pews. Not any of us. If it is, then God's got to He's got to upgrade us because 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 every every stone in the temple is is with a purpose. We all have a mixture of of gifts and and things that we're given that we're going to be responsible for them one day. But can you imagine this? And it's not a typical denominational pastor that would be accused of casting out devils and prophesying. Right. Are you here? Keep going. So who are we talking about? We're talking about full gospel preachers that have, that have gone, before God, they've gone rogue. Mm -hmm. They're a law unto themselves. And some of these guys are saying this. Well, you know, I mean, you know, I mean they're, they're, they're so huge. They bring in so much money. They're on TV. Their exposure is great. Some of these guys are not living right. But see, in a culture where we're so impressed with media and television, in a culture where we make stars out of people, they become authorities and start dictating the directions in the body of Christ. And God will soon put it to an end. Some of these have fallen, and over the next 10 years or whatever it happens to be, there's going to be more. Because God will have a people. The Lord Jesus will have a people. He will have a bride that's without spot or wrinkle. And in one way, there's already the dividing taking place. Somebody say, well, well you know, why doesn't the Lord just remove it all right now? Because, because right now, people have the choice what they want to follow. Do they want to follow a, a gospel that is self-indulgent, that is all about them, where they're on the throne, and the Lord has been brought into the place of fulfilling their dreams and, and maybe, maybe helping them to be anointed to do their thing, but it's not about God, it's about them. See, how many know God is not our servant? And when it's all about me, me, my, 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 and when we get spiritual, me, my ministry, my anointing, my, 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 I can't do what the pastors, you know, because I have my call, my call, my, my time, my call. It sounds like the devil. That's like Isaiah 14 where it says, I will raise up my throne. I will ascend. I will do this. I will ascend to this kind of a place. That's just like the devil. There is no fulfilling a call without stepping into a place where we uh, come into our corporate identity. 
That's why the prophecies over the house are even more powerful than the prophecies to you specifically because your specific word and your specific place has to join the whole thing because a stone doesn't choose its own place in the wall. The master puts it there for a purpose so that every army member can fight side by side, not jostling one another. You know, the symphony can be ruined. If people get out of place and if some don't do their job, you know. If the, if the tuba player or the first violin doesn't play and the second violin wants to take the job of the first violin, the one that's supposed to play harmony. I mean, can you imagine what a symphony would sound like? If everybody just sort of like, I, I like this guy's role more. And, you know, the, you know and one guy beats the other guy over the head with a clarinet. And, and the guy's that's got a concussion there and he's bleeding. And, and you got, it's like war breaking out in the middle of the symphony. That sounds like a lot of churches even. Are you here? How did I get off on that? <laughs> but I appreciate a man of God that's, that's married to his wife after many, many years. How many, how many years have you guys been married? 32 years this past July. I love it. We dated four years. We just had our 30th anniversary. We had to celebrate it over Skype because she had to run back to be with her parents with a medical situation. We just had our 30th. So you guys are two years ahead of us. We're almost like Smithsonian artifacts in some places. <laughs> Even as preachers, sad to say. See, God wants us to be examples of holiness. Amen. Examples of wholeness. Jessica and Shannon, I mean, they love the Lord. Nathan loves the Lord. They're serving the Lord. What a heritage. Yeah. What a blessing. What an example. Hallelujah. And, and, and we're all as a team rising up into a place. Can, can you imagine what would happen if, if, if there was a whole congregation that comes into a place where all of us with one heart and one mind says, let us rise and build and do the will of God and let us, let us accomplish the purposes of God and let us bring the presence of God into our locale, into our city, into our region into our houses. Our houses can be places that when you wake up in the morning, it's a, see, we're temples individually. Mm -hmm. Your house is sort of like a, you know, a little bit more of a macrocosm of, of the individual. I mean, your, your, your family is like a small church. You get into a wider, you got the whole church. But all these, as the temple of God, he wants, he wants his presence. We wake up in his presence. We go to bed in his presence. We're, we're worshiping him. We're, we're careful what we listen to. We're careful what we put into us because we don't want to do things that would grieve that presence away. But we want to do things that would draw and attract the presence of God stronger and stronger and stronger. Why? Because that becomes a hotbed to pray out things with a whole measure of authority, a whole measure of of um, accuracy because there's inspiration to deal with situations. You know, there's a scripture in the Old Testament that says we couldn't even plead our case. We couldn't drop our case before God because of darkness. What is darkness? It's the absence of the presence of God and the absence of living in a certain place of light. It's not a matter of how much you know here. It's a matter of how much you're walking in it. That becomes light. I remember one time, this is when we first went over to Europe, and, and I was, I knew we had to move some or do something. I mean, we're at the point right now, it, it was like, it's like sometimes, you know, your, your baby comes to full term. You know, we use, we use, we use the pregnancy, uh, you know, concept, you know, when we're talking about ministry. And, um, and so sometimes, you know, some things in God, you, you, become, you become pregnant with it. Yeah. But you have to feed it. Right. You have to feed it. Now, remind me to come back to pregnancy here. Everybody likes to hear about pregnancy, I guess. I don't know. But, you know, even those prophecies we've heard for years were, were at the door of some great thing happening. You know, let's take that door back there. I can be, I can be one meter from that door, a yard from that door, and if I sit down cross-legged, I could be at that same place 10 years later. And if I go in a different direction, I could be 150 miles from that door 20 years later. And there's a lot of the body of Christ that are farther than they ever were from the place of God coming down. But, but make no mistake about it, there will be a move of God yet. 
but there's a dividing taking place. The sheep are divided from the goats. Even before the final judgment, there's even right now, there's God's looking at who will serve him and who won't, who wants him and who wants what they want. And he's already starting to formulate, there, there's people that are going to be selected and picked to come into places in God, in anointings, in gifts, in leadership, in various forms of ministry, because they've, they've, they've given themselves to God. So even, even before Isaiah, before the Lord, before the Lord gave him that, that, that call, he recognized that I'm a man of unclean lips among, you know, and he repented before the Lord, and he came to a place, and, and he became awed with the presence of God. And then the, then the Lord says, whom shall I send? And I says, says, here am I, send me. The sending isn't necessarily a huge geographic issue. In our case, we went over to the other side of the planet. But the sending can be across the road, across the city, across the state. It can be, it can be a lot of things. And God wants to bring us into a place of promotion. Promotion doesn't have to be geographical. Promotion, maybe even more often than not, is an upgrading of the equipment that we're walking in spiritually. He wants us to have eyes that see amazingly, that we're not, we're not able to be duped. We're not, we're, not, we're not blind to situations. We see through them. We see, we see situations afar off that are a threat to us or our family. We have radar that works. We, we have an understanding, we, 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 we know when ahead of time when there's, when there's some kind of a, a, a threat to family members, physically, health-wise, financially. God wants his people so sharp that we just know ahead of time, so sharp. But we've got to walk closer and closer to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you here? Amen. The desire of the presence of the Lord. So I was talking about the pregnancy. And in a time, sometimes when, you're, when you're, you, you know that something's coming, you can be so squeezed, so squeezed. The baby comes into the birth canal. I don't know what the, if the baby had ability to think. She goes, she, the baby would go, oh my goodness, where have I come into? I'm being pushed and pressured and pushed and pressured and pushed and pressured. But there comes birth. If, if what's on the inside of you is fed, it'll come to full term. And there'll be a birthing of what God gives. Hallelujah. Let's just lift up our hand and say, Lord, feed us. Bring to full term the things that you've planned for our lives, for my life, for my family. And show me the things that I must do. Show me things to come. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well... That pressure time can be difficult sometime, and, I'm, I, and I started to say when, before, before going to Europe, I was in a situation, I was actually in Belgium, and frustrated because I knew that I needed to get, I needed to get leading on something, and it just wasn't coming, and I was getting more frustrated. How many know that, you know, when you pray in other tongues, you, you're building up yourself, you're building up your spiritual you're, you're becoming more filled with the Spirit. You, you, become into, you come into a place of more sensitivity. First Corinthians says you're praying through secrets, or you're praying through things you don't understand in the present and the things to do with the future, most of which are secret to you because you don't understand and we don't know the future. Right. So you're praying for these things. You can pray out the future that way. But in my case, I wasn't really trusting the Lord. I was, I was, just, I was just in a place where I was sort of nervously, but my mind and my heart, I, I was yeah. worried. Yeah. You can do that and you don't get edified the same way as you do when you trust the Lord and in faith you're praying in other tongues. Yeah, yeah. And every phrase you're praying in other tongues, you know that it's weighty before God. It's a holy language. You're praying out very specific things before God. Sometimes it even helps, just even for your own mind, to just slow down a bit and enunciate what you're saying a little bit more. Instead of just slow down and just more deliberately release faith and just say, Lord, I pray now for this matter. Father, I thank you. I thank you, for, I thank you for the understanding you're going to bring. And you mix rejoicing and faith with that. And I remember I was on the other side of the fence, nervous, and the Lord just said, he says, you want to see, come into the light. 
I knew right away what he meant. I was, I was keyed up. I needed to just concentrate on the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. To draw near him in worship. See, when you draw near to him, he draws near to you. Isn't that what the Bible says? And so I just started worshiping the Lord and praising the Lord. And all of a sudden, peace came over me. And, 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 I, and I told the Lord, I said, I'm, I'm not even going to nervously pray about this thing. I know you know the time frame. I mean, I feel that I'm very pressured. I've got to have this information without delay here. But I just started worshiping God and thanking the Lord that he was going to show me. I just worshiped and worshiped. See, God wants the temple full of worship because that's the kind of temple that he inhabits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they prayed and worshiped in one accord in uh, Solomon's time, uh, they walked right into the glory. And that's a type and a shadow. And I remember doing that, and all of a sudden things, the Lord started, you know, first my heart came into a lightness and a peace. And the next thing that happened, all of a sudden, he started taking initiative on different things. I wasn't just, just like some would say, just minding my own business. And all of a sudden, the Lord would just minister something to me or speak to me. I wasn't trying to hear from him. I was just trying to minister to him. See, it's just like Acts chapter 13, too. They, they gathered together uh, this has is, been is just like one, uh, one big appetizer. I haven't even got into the body of the message. I guess this is a good thing. It's a night meeting. <laughs> but Acts chapter 13, let's move over there because this is a pattern for us. I don't know if you've thought of this, and, and, and this, this sort of touches what we're going into anyway. Because the Lord gave me three words just uh, recently, this year. And... Um, the Lord usually doesn't get very poetic with me, and I'm not usually one with names and titles to messages. I let others figure that out. I don't even know if I've got three points or four, and if, if I'm on the fourth point, it might actually be the eighth point, because I don't think in terms of point one, two, and three, and four usually. The people that do, thank God for those people. I'm jealous of them sometimes. I just don't work, you know, I just, I just basically throw out the food, and who's hungry takes it and runs with it, you know, and I trust that it's good food. But Acts chapter 13, it says in verse 2, you know, it talks about in the church, there was an Antioch, verse 1, certain, there was, there was at the, uh, in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers. And it says, verse 2, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work, whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. Now, this is interesting because they um, weren't fasting and praying to get something from God. They were fasting and praying to give something to God. Yeah, yeah. They stepped into a new place of priestly duty. Now, I think it's a radical thought that somebody would fast and pray to come together to worship God on Sunday morning. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to just, just so give myself in a different way to give to God. These guys did it. It wasn't just like a, an hour's meeting. They, they separated a period of time to fast and pray to minister to the Lord. And, and something happened. I don't know, if you, have you ever thought sometimes, you know, why, why the Lord didn't send Paul to Jerusalem? You know, you know, Paul got saved a little bit after the original bunch was, was in Jerusalem. I mean, you know, 10, 12 years later. You know, a lot can happen in 10 or 12 years. Azusa Street... Uh, it, it, uh, some things, because, because it wasn't kept in order by the word of God, it basically, it basically flew apart after just, you know, you know three, four, three, four years. Some of these other, you can call it, you can, you can call it uh, whatever blessing, or you can call it whatever revival, you can call it, you can call all these moves by different names, but very few of them last more than just a few years, because either one of two things happens. Either error comes in, which causes it to basically fracture and, 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 and and the, and the devil gets in through that, or, or, the, or the people, uh, actually it's not one of two things, it's one of several things, people can put their own name on it. Pretty soon they're, they're calling in all these professional worship bands, and, and this, this is going to be now, this new tape, this is going to be da-da-da, and, you know, and everybody's getting their, is sponsored now, this, this move of God is now sponsored by somebody. People are wanting credit for it. Somebody, somebody gets healed, and, and right away the person's there posing with them, yes, this was my ministry, give to good ground. And God looks at it and goes, you just disqualified yourself. Yep. 
And he'll keep using the person. They'll keep being famous. They might even get more famous, but God already says you're disqualified. Some people say the proof of the pudding's in the eating. Well, if you're talking about pudding, it is. The kingdom of God is not pudding. It's not meat or drink, nor pudding. Did Moses get results when he struck the rock? The second time. He got results. Did the water come? Yeah, it came. Were the people satisfied? Yeah, they were satisfied. And Moses disqualified himself. Because he knew better in that situation. And he crossed the line. It's a, it's a, serious, it's a serious situation. It's a very serious thing. That's why it says in 1 Corinthians 10 too, it says... All the, you know, let's see if you'll take a look at the first 11 verses of chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians. It says all those things that were written in the past. Now, in Romans 15, 4, it says all the things that are written in the past were also for our encouragement. But there it says those things that are written in the past, they're written for our admonishment and warning so that we don't make the same mistakes that they did and have, their, have our hearts go in, the, in, a, in a wrong pattern, a wrong way like they did and suffer for it or be destroyed for it. Anybody read 1 Corinthians 10? That'll be your dessert when you go home later. See, I don't know. I get the distinct feeling in a lot of places that I'm not the flavor of the month either because I, I preach stuff that, 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 that it, it just is not always what everybody wants to hear. But I know you like it here. That's why I'm here. And um, so, where was it? Seems like I left the window open here. It's just, Acts. To the Lord. Yeah. Passing in separate and stuff to the Lord. Exactly. And now this is, this is amazing because, you know, we're talking about the proof of the pudding too. I'll get right, right to Acts again here. The proof of the pudding. See, again, the proof of the pudding, we would say that those people that Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. If you were just going by the, the outward fruit, you'd oh, go, yeah. you got, man, these guys are movers and shakers. Yeah, yeah. That same passage, if you go all the way back to verse 13, where it says the entrance into the kingdom of God is narrow, very few that find it. The path to destruction is wide, and many will find it. And then it says by, your, by their works, or by their fruits, I mean, you shall know them. But the fruits are talking about the inward fruits. In the immediate context, it's talking about the inward fruits. And ultimately, the chapter closes by saying that if we are doers of the word, our house will stand. The storms come to everybody, but our house stands. Hallelujah. So, but in, now, Acts chapter 13, these guys ministered to the Lord. They fasted, and the Holy Ghost said, separate unto me. So the, the, the Lord came with light on the situation. And I remember that as I did this too, light came. And all of a sudden, just in, in a series of surprise events, actually, and, and things that the Lord did directly, just even a couple experiences with him in the middle of this trip to Europe, all of a sudden, the plan was clear, the path was straight in a very short time. I was so frustrated, hitting my head against the wall for so long before with no fruit, no understanding of what to do, and suddenly, all of a sudden, it just fell into place, almost like by itself. Because when you draw near to God, he draws near to you. And when he draws near to you, light is, revelation is, inspiration is, and things start taking shape. And so we need God. We need, a, we need a, to be people of God, but we need to be churches of God. I'm not talking about denomination now here. We're talking, we need to be filled with the presence of God. These people here, they fasted. They had a, their, their attitude was, was, was fasting to give to God. Even when revelation came, then they started a new fast. They continued fasting you know, before laying hands on them. I was starting to say, there are three words that came up. The Lord's not usually poetic with me, but it's, it's, it's like, and all of a sudden the word presence, like, like the presence of God, and then prayer. And there was a third thing, and I, and, and I, and I thought to myself, you know, you know it, it, I'm sit, like, like somehow just not getting it, and, and I said, I said, you know, I was sort of being sort of cute. I said, Lord, it'd be really great if this thing rhymed. 
Because yeah. I never have it happen almost like in, you know, in, a, in, a, in a message or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, there was the word. It was reworded, and, and it was protocol. Prayer, uh, uh, presence, prayer, and protocol. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to discuss whatever we're, we still have time to touch here in the morning meeting and, and, then, and, and then finish in the evening, Lord willing. And um, because we need to be people that are filled with his presence. And we need to understand how this happens. Uh, turn, um, turn with me to... Um, Leviticus 9, 6. This is a funny place to maybe turn to initially. See, we see a lot of types and shadows and patterns. And we see here, 9, 6, it says, And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded that you should do, and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. One translation says, That the glory of the Lord should appear to you. And we see something on the contrary side of this. Now, these are, these are just two scriptures. We see the same principle running through the entire of the Old Testament and the New Testament, both. And, um, and we even see it, you know, even as, as early as, 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 as Cain, you know, where the Lord, Lord tells him, he says, he says, you know, why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But sin is crouching at the door and wants to have you, but you must master it. Are you here? That's that's four seven, in Genesis. Now, if we if we go to um, Ezekiel, eight and verse six. It says here. He said, "Furthermore unto me, son of man, see see what they do. See that what they do. Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far from my sanctuary." Pay, uh, take note of that. That he should go far from his sanctuary. We notice from the Old Testament. That there's different things when Israel came into a certain place. Certain things drove the presence of God far from the sanctuary. There's things that they did that would draw the Lord close. We see the same principles in the, in the New Testament as well. We see from different scriptures about drawing near to God, that he draw near to you. Um, but there's a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of the same principle. If we take a look at, at 2 Corinthians, we want, we want a New Testament passage, of course, you know. And um, as you're doing that, uh, stick your finger in the, in the section of where, where we're going to go to Mark 11. And uh, anybody ever heard of Mark 11 before? And I'm being sort of cute about it because we always look at it from a certain standpoint, and uh, rightly so. But there's something that, that just jumped out at me, very, very unusual. But in the meantime, let's go to 2 Corinthians first. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. Verse 14, it says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion has light with darkness. This is the reason, too, that if you read Ezekiel 44, you see the heart of God. See, see God never changes. Certain terms of the covenant change, but, but, but uh, uh, being zealous for holiness never changes. Being zealous for God never changes. See, he, he, he redeemed for us a people that should be zealous for good works. Isn't that what the Bible says in the New Testament? Yeah. Be holy as I am holy, and without holiness you shall not see God. So all these principles, they, 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 they run, the, you know, they're, they're both, they run across the Testaments. And I tell you this much, the New Testament standards are even higher than the Old Testament standards. All you have to do, take a look at how Jesus addressed the church in Revelation 2 and Revelation 3. If there's any question about how the Lord talks to his church in the New Testament time, read Revelation 2 and Revelation 3, and it'll put it very clearly into place. This is the last word from the Lord to his beloved bride that we have record of in the, in the, in the, in the Bible. And we see here... As we read on, what concord has Christ with Belial, or another name for the devil, or what ha part uh, he that, uh, hath he that believeth with an infidel? And this is why I was starting to say in Ezekiel 44, you want to read an interesting passage. It's talking, it's talking about bringing the defiled into the forefront, into the leadership, the defiled into, into, the, 
into the, into the, 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 the front lines of ministry and, and, and what God actually said about it. You know, because a lot of, a lot of churches, they'll do that. They'll, they'll bring people in from the nightclub just because they know how to play the, the guitar. They'll bring in the musicians from who knows where, and, and, and their spirit, the nature of their spirit is like, a, is like a viper's nest, but they're going to be on the middle of the platform, and people can applaud, and the smoke can come out of the smoke machines, but God's, God has left the building. And I've gone to some of these churches. You come back. The technology is unbelievable. What they do is unbelievable. The packaging is unbelievable. But God has left the building. Some of these same places that the presence of God was so sweet, even just 15 years earlier. And it's changed. But the temple has to have the presence for it to be a temple. And there are certain things that we do that drive God back. That's why it says in, his, in, 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 in Ephesians, grieve not the Holy Spirit. And, and there are things that attract the Spirit of God helps us worship. So when we worship, it draws the Spirit of God close. There's no mystery why the Spirit of God draws. He is the Holy Spirit. He's the Spirit of holiness. And when we give ourselves to holiness, we give ourselves to that Spirit. It says there is no lie in Him. When we lie, we give a part of our nature to the Father of lies. And there's a mixture. And some people's spirits are like revolving doors. All kinds of weird spirits come in and out. It's, it's, like, it's like a department store with all kinds of weird people. Every, every snake and centipede comes in and out of that revolving door too. And, and, and they wonder why they can't sleep properly at night, why their dreams are all messed up, why the vision for God's gone, because all these spirits are influencing their heart. That's why it says in, in Proverbs chapter 4, guard your heart above all things that are to be guarded. We guard our house, we guard our car, we guard all kinds of things. We've got alarms, and in Estonia you have to have like two immobilizers as well as an alarm, you know, and you know, you can't leave anything visible, and it could be a trashy looking something, but you're going to have a broken window and the thing's going to be ripped off. Wow. So we have to guard everything. Everything goes in a trunk, nothing stays visible. You got the alarms, you got the immobilizers, the house, you know, sometimes it says, you know, guarded with two watchdogs, even if one of them is a chihuahua. <laughs> You got everything, you got everything, you know, just to, to ward off, scare off, freak out, you know, all these people, you know, bear in the backyard. Well, you know, maybe there is, you know, so, you know what I mean? And, um, but, you know, above all things that are to be guarded, we're to guard our heart. Wow. Proverbs 4 says, because out of your heart flow the issues of life. Prophetically, the things that rise up that give you understanding about situations. Jesus, Jesus even said, see, you can have all the smarts, you can have a Ph.D., you know, there's a lot of people with PhDs that basically are, are as, you know, they're as dumb as a bat when it comes to how they live. You know, they're, you know, they're, they, they can't figure out how to live. They're, 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 they're on their fifth marriage. And so if you come from a broken marriage, I'm not picking on anybody because God, God can reassemble what the devil's stolen. Thank God for this. But, you know, some people just do not know how to live. They know everything about everything. They can intellectually talk about every subject other than what really counts. They're clued out. Sometimes they don't even want to talk about it. The very thing that will bring them help is like a drowning person who says, don't talk to me about that ring boy. Don't talk to me about that life preserver. Don't talk to me about that rope. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I'm not into religion and politics. I'm just, a, you just let me drown peacefully. You ever talk to people like that? They're just so knot-headed. You just, you just you'd want, to, you'd want to take one of these big old fat ropes with a knot and just... <laughs> Hit that knot head. Just figure it. Anybody got any relatives like that? So we all know people like that. And uh, where was I? My goodness, where was I? Guard your heart. Because out of that flows the revelation, the understanding, even the ability to latch on the scriptures that you know in your head are the key to being healed or, or having your needs met. Uh, somehow or another, have you ever noticed that sometimes you latch on to them better than other times? Uh -huh. See, there's inspiration from God. There's help from God. God is a helper. Yeah. He is a prayer answer, but he is a helper. He is our guide. He is our private instructor to lead us into all truth. And when he leads us into all truth, not just having your files, the files of your understanding, you know, you know your library filled. Leading you into all truth means leading you into the, into the fruitfulness 
and experientially into all the wisdom of God and into the life that he has, where things work and his presence is there. Second Corinthians. And so he goes and says, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, wherefore, therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Let's all say that's New Testament. That's New Testament. We know that God never changes, um, but here it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very interesting promise, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of flesh and spirit, Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let's all say New Testament. Because there's, there's doctrines that have come out that, that would a, a, attack and to subvert this. Go, to, go with, uh, oh, I think we're going to have to look at Matthew, or I mean Mark, Mark 11 later. But let's, let's look for a moment to, uh, uh, tonight that is, later. Um, Romans, 15th chapter. Romans 15th chapter. Verse 16 says here, that I should be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable. Let's say I'll say that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable. Catch the word acceptable. Right from the very beginning, not every offering was accepted by God, was it? Right. We see that all through the Bible. We see it in the Old Testament, we see it in the New Testament. We see even Demas. First time you hear about him, he loved the Lord. The second time you hear about Demas, before he was a wonderful brother, the second time you hear about Demas, he wasn't so wonderful anymore. He deserted the plan of God because he loved the world. And, and he fell from his position. And an interesting thing, these three things, prayer, presence, or, uh, presence, prayer, and protocol, I might not be able to just totally do one, totally do the next, and totally, they'll overlap a little bit. But these two messages, or these two meetings, I will, I will be, I'll be talking about these con this concept. God has a purpose. And Paul, it wasn't about just getting point one, two, and three across. He was trying to work into the people's lives in such a way where they would receive the word implanted and the word would root and come forth and they themselves would be... See, every seed produces after its own kind. A pear produces a pear. An alligator doesn't produce a canary. Not even after a long time. The scales yeah. don't fall off and they don't suddenly turn yellow. Right. I mean, the whole thing is just... That's the, that's the kookiest, most desperate myth that somebody could come up with and somehow it's just received. But you know, every seed produces after its own kind. God's seed will produce God in us. And that's the whole purpose of the gospel, that Christ be formed in us. Romans 8 says that Christ be formed in us. Colossians 1 says Christ in us, the hope of glory. In Ephesians 3, it says that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or imagine. How? According to that power that is, or according to, or in, into the measure of the power that is working in you. Some people allow the power to work in them more. The seed, when it's received, will start producing. The Bible says that it works in us. The word is fruitful in us. It works day and night. And when we receive that word we soon will become, we're ordained, 2 Corinthians, to be living epistles before God. Some people will never read the Bible, but they'll read you. And when they read you, do they see Christ? Has Christ been formed in us? That's, that's a project we have every day. Some people say, I don't know what to do. Everything starts with what we are, because out of what we are will come what we do. That's why Paul, in, in, in Galatians 1, verse 16, says, And it pleased God to reveal Christ in me, not just to me, but in me. 
that I may preach. Are you here? Hallelujah. The presence indwelling. God's word indwelling. We're receiving and partaking of God. He is the living word. As we receive that word, it starts working on the inside of us, conforming us, changing us, making us into the image of the Most High. That as he is, so are we in this world, will come not only legally into place, but it'll come in actuality. More of the same power, more of the same stability. He's not nervous, jittery on the throne. His throne is not a, a wheelchair. He's not jittery on the throne. He's not perplexed about tomorrow on the throne. He knows. He knows that everything works according to purposes ultimately. People can choose wrong. They can choose right. This is a time where the sheep are being separated from the goats, the, the chaff being separated from the wheat, the wheat from the tares. It is a time. To, see, the very first act of God on the earth, the very first act of God on the earth, after he said, let there be light, he separated light from darkness. Before there was a sun even, before there was any planets or moon, before there was a day and night, he separated light and dark. And he wants light and dark to be separated in us because we're children of the light so that we can be children of his presence. Hallelujah. Are you here? I mean, I believe that just as we hear these concepts and as we receive these concepts, there'll, there'll come a clearer and clearer vision of, of, of the expectation of God for us. Because every day as we rise, we can say, Lord, I want to come into your image that much more. I want my words to be as your words, your truth, your boldness, your faith. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I want the abundance of my heart to be good, that out of the treasure within, good fruit is produced. Lord, help me that I'd be rock solid in all my horizontal relationships. I'd be rock solid in my faith towards you. Rock solid before you. That, Lord, that, that, that I, would be, I would be as you. What's the sense of having a huge church that is... A desire in them is so much to be known and recognized and understood by the community of unbelievers. They want to be understood by the devil's kids. And in the process, they become a foreigner to God. Every great man of God, every great woman of God in the Bible, and subsequently, they've been people that have dared to stand on the word and even if they're not recognized for years, ultimately God recognizes them. Even some, like Ezekiel, can you imagine being told, you know, you're going to preach them, but they're, they're a stiff neck bunch, they're not going to listen to you. Was Ezekiel a great man of God? He had some of the most profound revelations out of anybody in the Word of God. Some of the, some of the experiences in the glory were so intense. And most of his experiences in the glory had to do with judgment, not miracles. Paul's first miracle was somebody being struck blind. It wasn't even them being healed, too, for that matter. Are you here? Now, if I said that on, on sitting on a Christian TV show, I'd get all kinds of interesting mail. But, you know, we have to reckon with what the Bible says. Hallelujah. There is a presence and as we honor God, his presence comes more and more. The only time the children of Israel lost battles and, and, and just totally lost out in the Old Testament was, was when they had idols. They were living in idolatry. They were, they were serving something more than God. See, thou shalt have no other gods before me. It, it, it's not even just like a head in rank and God's number two and this idol's number one. It's not even that. Before me means before his eyesight. Are you here? Hallelujah. And God will receive us in a greater way and he will start speaking to us and he will start drawing us in a greater way and his presence as we, as we desire in a greater way. <clears throat> we will come in. And I tell you what, I was driving up, I was driving to, <clears throat> driving over here and, and I, just, I just felt just so stirred to say this, Pastor Ed and Janie, that as... As you pursue God, you've been pursuing God, 
But as all of us, because of the time we're in, as we, we just amp up the way we're pursuing God, as you pursue God, there's going to be people out there in various places, some of which love God. They're desperate to actually experience God, but somehow they've been trapped in a system. They're like in a mausoleum, and all their friends, and all, you know, they grew up in that church, that place, and, and all of a sudden it's gone so foreign. They allow all kinds of defiled people to lead and do and all kinds of things, and God's left, and they're sort of trapped in it, but ultimately the ones that are hungry for God, they'll come out. And that's why God says, even, in, even through the scriptures, you can say, I will take them out and lead them to fields where I can feed them and give pastors that will lead them with knowledge and understanding. And as that happens, there'll be those but as this all grows and grows and grows, because every church has been through different... If you look at church history, some of the greatest moves of God, the, the, the years or decades prior, have been so difficult, so discouraging, so you're wondering, is this going anywhere? But because they hang on when the rest apostatize, God knows I know who I'm going to appear in the midst of. And make no mistake about it, he'll do it. Stay true to God. Desire in the presence of God. He will show up. And ultimately what this will mean, ultimately what this will mean, not immediately, but ultimately, is the move of God will intensify to the point where it will arrest the attention of all kinds of sinners in a motley assortment of lifestyles and stuff. And you're going to get people saved, the likes of you wondered, where did this guys come from? Where they, suddenly, and where, like in the, in the backgrounds and all this, and they're going to come. And this place will be long too small. Yeah. But some people want the big, whether it's for image sake or to show something's happening, and they'll, they'll just get every, they'll get every viper and centipede in the house, doesn't matter how they're living. Nobody's accountable to anything, just as long as you come and pay your tithes. See, I appreciate what pastor says. Some, some pastors are not like that. They, they say, you know, just, just pay, 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 I, you, know, you know, and by their, by their non-confronting of certain issues. See, see, Moses didn't confront. That's one reason why the whole generation died in the wilderness. He almost, he almost lost his life in the very beginning because he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't circumcise his own son. See, circumcision is dealing with the flesh. It's a type and a shadow. He didn't like that confrontation. He didn't like dealing with that. The first bunch that revolted, he, he should have just said, okay, guys, uh, you, we're going to ship you back to Egypt. We're going to put you on a camel and send you out of camp. A lot of pastors don't want that because in some cases they're so concerned over how this person, this person responds to the word of God. That's why I thank God that you're in a church that continues to preach truth. And um, there was a whole generation when Joshua came around <coughs> God told Joshua, he says, he says, the whole second generation, none of them been circumcised. Get them circumcised. Joshua 3, 5, consecrate yourself for tomorrow God will do great things among you. Hallelujah. God will do it. Make no mistake about it. The plans and purposes of God never change. He wants to do a great work. And there's some things that are necessary for his presence to come in our midst really, really strong. Are you here? And ultimately, 5,000 times a mess is a big mess. Romans will finish here. That the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable. That the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. The word sanctified means separated by the Holy Ghost, sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Paul's job was to present to God a people. That's why he said, too, in Colossians 1, he says, I struggle with all the energy and, and, the, and the ability that God gives that I may present everyone perfect in Christ. That's why he says in 2 Corinthians that I'm, 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 I'm jealous with you, with a godly jealous, uh, jealousy, and, and, and I'm afraid that even as a, as a serpent tricked Eve, your, your minds might be tricked by the simplicity that's in Christ because I've, I've been assigned to 
uh, present you to Christ, the chaste virgin. This is what stirred Paul. And the modern move of God, as we, or the modern Christian world, they don't see that. They just see people at, at all cost. The standards go down. And the people, they're attracted by the perks. But if they're attracted by the perks, next place down the road has even bigger perks, and pretty soon they're going to be jumping to the next restaurant because the first one's not as good as the second one. But it's not about the perks. It's not, it's not even about what we can... Uh, what we can get from a church is about how we can build as God has assigned to us a position. Hallelujah. Are you here? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's just lift up our hands here. We worship you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Now, I know that I've preached well long enough, because not every place is like Italy there with the, with the three hours before the break. Our own church is, isn't like that either, even though they, they do get concerned if I go under 50 minutes, or if, they, if I go under an hour, they, they go, something's wrong. In fact, it's not even an hour and 110 minutes, they're going, Pastor, is he rushing somewhere? Has he got to catch a flight somewhere? Has he got to go somewhere? But just before we stop, I'm going to read one, one verse as, a, as sort of like a, an introduction to what we'll touch later on too. Verse 11 of second chapter of Titus. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us. Let's all say grace teaches. Grace teaches. Let's find out what grace, what true, the great, true grace of God teaches us. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the, our, of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself. Let's all say unto himself. So he's looking for a bride that's not a flirting bride, a bride unto himself, a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Now, Father... As we pray here in closing, Father, may the things that we've heard stir a noble theme on the inside of our hearts as we read in the scriptures. Father, may, may, that, may that desire for your presence become stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And Lord, it's not even just a matter of seeking an experience. You, Lord, you yourself said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. And Lord, we thank you for the power of your spirit. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've made us the righteousness of God in Christ. But just as we've read here too, that as we separate ourselves unto you, that you'll receive us in a, in a tangibly more powerful measure. Father, I thank you for the power of your spirit. I thank you, Lord, that even as you revealed yourself to, the, to, to Paul and his group there, We thank you, Father, for the power of your spirit, revealing your plans, your purposes to our lives, steadily unfolding your plan. And Father, as we build your work, I thank you, Father, for your will coming to pass in our lives and through us corporately. Let's just lift up our hands in this place right now. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name.